Hello everyone here at OS Reviews. Today we're taking a look at some tips and tricks for the Nubia UI. And Nubia is a subsidiary of ZTE, a smaller sub-brand that focuses more on elegant design as well as bring together excellent camera performance. Nubia UI is a very unique mobile OS, or I should say skin, on top of Android OS, and it has many clever ideas tucked away to complement a striking design. The device that we're showing you right now is the Nubia Z17 Lite, which has these bezel-less edge displays, and many of the gestures baked into Nubia UI 5.0 take advantage of these super slim side bezels. So tip number one would be just controlling uh, multitasking using these super slim side bezels. You can open up a number of different apps and for instance if I want to switch now between those apps all I need to do is flick my hand on the side here and uh, it gives me this turning page animation that brings me into the previously open application one by one or I can also switch the other way around by swiping downwards. Tip number two is how to go back onto a previous page without tapping on the key on the way down below here because it's uh, quite far and because this is a large 5.5 inch phone you have to reach using your thumb all the way to the bottom here to tap on back. Luckily there's another gesture that you can use the super slim side bezels to access. Simply tap twice on any area of the bezels whether it's higher up or lower down wherever your thumb is resting comfortably and that will always take you back onto the previous screen. Tip number three is using the split screen multitasking and it's done a little bit differently on the Nubia Z17. It's swipe up from the middle of the display and now we have two mini launchers as you can see here which show off very small icons and since this phone has pretty good specs including six gigs of RAM it's keeping up without any problems. So for instance I can be say reading the user manual over here and let's say I want to be checking out Gmail over here or watching a video and everything is continuing on without any stuttering or delays. The next edge gesture is controlling the screen brightness by putting two fingers on both of the edges and then swiping downwards to minimize the brightness and swiping up to turn the brightness of the screen up as well. Accessing quick launch shortcuts with a swipe up gesture from the left or the right of the display. I can swipe up from here or swipe up from over here to have access to things like a flashlight. In addition, I can access a quick calculator as well. And I can also access something like Super Snap, taking a quick image using the camera, scanning a QR code, projecting this to another display, changing the screen brightness, as well as many of the other power saving GPS and Wi Fi tools that I can toggle back and forth between. Taking a screenshot, you can take three fingers and you can swipe downwards to capture an image, or I can also swipe upwards, depending on my preferences, to also take another shot. And this will be saved into your gallery. And I can also record a screen video as well by tapping on screen record, and that can capture in a video format everything that I do, such as a gameplay event. The next tip is called app, app Lock. Under settings, you're able to lock specific games that you've downloaded so that it requires a quick fingerprint scan in order to open up. So let's say I want to encrypt the voice recorder here. I can turn that on and now I can go back home again. And if I want to open up recorder, it's gonna require me to scan my fingerprint once more to open up this program. The next tip is another kind of software command. I can swipe downwards from any home page to have access to universal search very much inspired by iOS, but I can search anything that will pull up queries on the internet. It will also search through settings on my phone, in addition to apps I have downloaded as well. So the next tip has to do with the camera. You can go into the camera family tab and take a look at special effects that uh, sets, new, sets the Nubia UI apart from stock Android. You have a lot more settings to play around with, whether it's uh, changing things like a light drawing. So when you're in the dark, it will adjust the exposure so it can capture a ray of light. There's also something called clone, which allows me to move one object that I'm taking into multiple places, keeping the background still in the same spot. So as you can see here right now, I moved this uh, little 3D printed fox and it created a clone of three of these in the background here, which actually is pretty cool. And tap on the 3D photos and from here it's going to optimize once. And now I can just rotate the phone using the accelerometer to see how the image changes as I shift it around. We can activate power saving mode and that turns off everything, including Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth, leaving us with just the wireless connectivity on just to conserve on battery. And this, in this simplified mode, we're unable to do basically anything uh, that requires uh, web browsing or playing back games. You're left with just a clock that tells I have 82 hours of battery life remaining with 77%. I can still call people, but that's uh, basically the only function I can access. Under touch gestures, you're also able to do things like double tap to turn on the display. So for instance, I can now double tap on the screen here for it to wake up from sleep, and that actually works quite well, even though you still need a fingerprint to unlock it. 
Smart sensing gives us more traditional controls like flipping the phone over to mute an incoming call and shaking to clear as well as a flip to mute or pause a playing track. Finally, you can also take a look at edge gestures and we already saw quite a few, but one I didn't talk about was accelerate to repeatedly swipe the edges of the phone. Basically that will clear the RAM up and allow you to perform a little faster when you are gaming. So I can swipe again left and right on the side of the phone there. And again, everything is basically closed up one final thing I'll leave you on is you can change kind of the launcher by having a 4x5 or 5x5 layout depending on how many icons you want to have displayed on your main menu. So for instance, now we have smaller icons being displayed. I can pinch out here as well to rearrange things like the icons, widgets, and wallpapers if I want to tweak this to my liking. So that's more or less it as far as our quick tips and tricks and a closer dive into Nubia UI on top of Android Nougat, uh, basically the same as well as on their Oreo version. Mainly unique and interesting edge sense gestures because the majority of Nubia phones on the market actually have these super slim bezels, so they're actually taking advantage of this feature, which is nice to note. Check out more details about the Nubia Z17 Lite in our unboxing, as well as our full review and more details about new Nubia UI in general in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS reviews.